What you want, Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> and hit that notification button. <laughs> and ring the bell. Yeah. All right, guys, we are here in Maine at, well, Matt's aunt and uncle, but all of our Show uncle, aunt and uncle. Yeah, dad's right here. Show dad a wholesome there he is. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a goof. Look, see, he's like nodding. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought it would be fun to do like a little, the well, I mean, interview, I guess it would be called. I don't know what else to call it. Just, just to tell stories because <laughs> Aunt Barbara grew up on a farm. So, and she tells us stories all the time and I, they're intriguing to me. Why are you scooching way over? <laughs> I am good putting this in. <laughs> So we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start with I don't know maybe some questions and just have her tell some stories. So this is Aunt Barbara and Uncle Cal. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi family. <laughs> you grew up on a farm. I did. You did. Yeah. What was that like? In <clears throat> I was in New Brunswick, Canada. Oh yes, in Canada. Probably yes, should have mentioned that. <laughs> in New Brunswick. Yes. Um, we were mixed, what they call mixed farming. Mm -hmm. yeah. So our crop, our cash crop was potatoes. Okay. Um, but we raised grain for our animals and we had gardening and um, we sold milk and mm -hmm. uh, cut our own hay um, and used our straw from our grain for our bedding for our cattle and our horses. Mm -hmm. And um, we were pretty self-sufficient, really. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you guys yeah. were pretty much no electricity. off the we, grid. Yes, yeah. so I'll start from the beginning and say that I was very lucky mm -hmm. uh, to be born when I was and to be able to spend the time that I did on the farm with my grandparents who were still uh, farming with horses mm -hmm. and horse-drawn equipment. And um, so I, I had a whole different experience than a lot of people my age. Um, and we were living on a back road, so we had no power, no electricity. Um, the house was heated uh, with a cook stove, um, basically. Uh, we had an outhouse. Um, back house they call it sometimes <laughs> um, so my grandparents had moved in there when I before I was born in 1936 and they were still working on the property to bring it back to uh, you know what it should be and it was pretty well back there when I you know by the time I was around in 1944 um, so because of my parents situation uh, they brought me home to live with my grandparents and they left me with them at six weeks old. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up there in the household with uh, two younger uncles, uh, my father's two younger uncles and my grandparents. Farming was the thing. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. We had a big farm dog. Um, he was my guardian, <laughs> and uh, his name was Tony, and he had actually been one of my uncle's dogs, and that he they moved into town and they couldn't take him, so mm -hmm. my grandparents took him, like all parents do, <laughs> right? Um, so we and we never had cats in the house, but we had barn cats. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fade now. You're gonna. I'm a city boy, and I bought. Everything at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's all yours. Bye, Uncle Cal. <laughs> what kind of yeah. um, other animals did you have? Okay, so we had, my grandfather had a pair of horses. Mm -hmm. um, we had, when I was young, um, we had about six cows. We always had Holsteins, mm -hmm. black and white Holsteins for milk. Uh, and they also sold their milk and butter mm -hmm. uh, and cream to the dairy. Um, so that how was they did. and eggs. Mm -hmm. We had we had hens and chickens and 
uh, always brought the box of new chicks in every spring and mm -hmm. kept them in the kitchen. We know those, huh? <laughs> we know so about that. <laughs> oh, I know. I love yeah. those chickens. We didn't have refrigeration mm -hmm. because we had no power. And so there was a brook at the end of the driveway that ran under the lake that was over beside us. And it always ran nice and cold because mm -hmm. it was all spring fed. And so they dug the brook deep so that they could set the milk cans hmm. in the water to keep the milk cold and the cream cold. So the milk cans sat in there during and in the shade of this big cedar tree that was my grandfather's pride and joy, mm -hmm. which is still there. <laughs> and uh, so it was shaded and cold running water. So it kept everything cold. Um, the butter, they put the butter in crocks mm -hmm. in the cellar. Um, and so the, uh, my grandmother would make the butter. Um, and everyone in the house loved buttermilk except me. <laughs> <laughs> and they drink all this <laughs> yummy buttermilk. Oh yeah, that's really yummy. Ugh. Yeah, and then they'd coerce me into taste again. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be know. mad at my uncles for, for coercing me into trying it again. Um, so they're but, just like, oh, you'll like it this time. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's going to be, yeah, it's good. It's so good. And they'd lick their lips and, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to try this. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, so I would. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, they would pick up, the dairy would come by with the truck and pick up uh, the cans of milk mm -hmm. um, twice a week. And so we had two sets of cans so that one set would go to the dairy and they'd bring the clean set back all sterilized and ready to go for the next batch. Mm -hmm. So our cows were milked. My grandfather did all the milking. Um, I guess the boys helped him sometimes, but they had other chores that they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so my grandfather milked in the morning and he milked again at night. All and right. my grandmother separated the milk <laughs> with the separator. Mm -hmm. And that separated uh, the milk from the cream. Um, we kept enough milk for our, you know, drinking and so on. During, during the war years, which of course I was born during the war years, everything was rationed mm -hmm. and money was scarce and uh, every penny counted. Uh, and they had a mortgage that they had to pay. Mm -hmm. So they would pay their mortgage twice a year. Um, they would pay their mortgage after the harvest in the fall. And then they would uh, cut pulpwood uh, over the winter and they would sell the pulpwood to the mill mm -hmm. in, the, in the spring and they would pay their mortgage off with, in oh. the spring. Oh, wow. So. Uh, every penny counted, mm -hmm. and they had a can on the top of the stove where the every penny that anybody brought into the house <laughs> went into that can. <laughs> um, egg money mm -hmm. went into the can. Um, my grandmother would make the butter in the hand churn, uh, which was a crock. It was a crockery mm -hmm. uh, with the wooden handle and the dash. Yep. And it took a long time to make that butter, a lot of energy. Uh, and then she would take it out from there. Um, that was the buttermilk that everybody was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> that awful stuff. Uh, <laughs> and um, so she'd take that out, put it in a bowl, work the, any water that was in it out of it, mm -hmm. add the salt to it, and make it into uh, pound size mm -hmm. blocks with a mold. So the mold was uh, the right size of a rectangular wooden mold. And so you'd pack it full mm -hmm. of butter, never touched your hands, 
it was packed with the ladle. Because of the warmth of your butter, hands melted. Butter ladle. Yeah. Well, it was going to the dairy. Oh, yeah, sanitation. Right? <laughs> so it never touched your hands. Uh, everything was done with the ladle and the bowl and a wooden, you mm -hmm. know, wooden bowl. And, uh, and then she'd pack those, uh, the mold full and then press it with the handle mm -hmm. and press out this nice golden brick <laughs> mm -hmm. of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like gold. It was like gold, yeah. yeah. So the dairy would give them, um, the dairy would give them the papers to wrap it in, mm -hmm. the wrappers. Oh, okay. So they'd have the little stack of wrappers mm -hmm. and you'd lay your wrapper out, press your butter out onto the wrapper, mm -hmm. wrap it, fold it, put it in the crock, and hands never touched mm -hmm. the butter. Um, and they would get to save one little pat for themselves for the week. And that was, was that all enough? the butter they'd have. <laughs> because all of it had to go to the dairy. <laughs> was that enough butter for you guys? Well, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I love butter. <laughs> In fact, we've been dubbed the lard family because we eat so much butter, but we love butter. And uh, so anyway, mm -hmm. um, so the dairy would take your eggs, uh, your butter, mm -hmm. um, your cream, and your milk. The skim milk that came off uh, usually fed the calves or the pigs mm -hmm. with. Yep. So they'd mix the skim milk with the pig uh, meal. Mm -hmm. um, or if you had new calves, you know, young calves, they'd, you know, they'd get the skim milk also. Um, yeah, so that was kind of like the basics for the for the butter and the cream thing. And that's just how you grew up. That's, that's how just, I grew that's up. How that's how it was. Every day. That's yeah. just how it was. Yeah. And people like me yeah, are trying that. to mimic that now. <laughs> and get yeah. back to that. Trying to go back we just to want to get back study. to that. Yeah, back to homesteading. And get back to that being self-sustaining and yes. and uh, not have yeah, not having to worry about grocery stores and and things like that like um some people <laughs> Like some people. <laughs> <laughs> Who announced in the beginning that he goes to the grocery store. <laughs> That's all he knew. That's all he knew, exactly. There's so he, two, he different, two different, big different stories here. He always tells me that I was born in a different century. Yep. Because... Oh, no lights, no electricity. I, yeah. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had kerosene lamps, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, burned in the evening. Mm -hmm. um, my grandmother would take the globes off the lamps every morning, wash them, mm -hmm. uh, fill fill the reservoir of the lamp with oil for the evening, mm -hmm. um, and trim the trim the wick, mm -hmm. and put the lamp on the shelf, and it would stay there all day until evening. Mm -hmm. You know, the kitchen was always nice and warm, even in the winter. The kitchen was always it was a big kitchen. Everyone lived in the kitchen mm -hmm. uh, in the winter time because um, the stove was your because the stove heat. was where it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the a stove. Heat. So for me, as a little tiny girl, um, I was the oven door would be opened mm -hmm. and I'd be changing my into my pajamas or whatever, uh, getting washed and mm -hmm. changed into my pajamas. Um, in front of the oven door, <laughs> where it was nice and warm Keep and warm. cozy. <laughs> uh, the other thing that they did, because there was no heat in the rest of the house, um, the only heat that would be through the rest of the house would be the stovepipe mm -hmm. that ran up through. Um, and there was a little bit of heat from that, but not a lot. Um, always had lots of quilts and blankets. I never remember being cold mm -hmm. in my bed or anything. That they would take. <clears throat> Everybody had their own <laughs> hardwood log mm -hmm. laid under the stove all day. At supper time, they put after supper they put the logs in the oven so that they would warm, mm -hmm. and they'd take that to bed as their foot warmer. At night. Really? Yep. Wow. So everybody would take their log when they went to huh. bed. <laughs> wow. Um, 
I yeah. did not know that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, they did have, I mean, rich people had uh, the soap bed stone, and bed and all warmers, that, yeah. and all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you had a log. We had a log. <laughs> yeah. It worked, though, right? It did. It worked. It worked. It worked. They Everything worked. My grandmother never threw a thing out. Mm -hmm. um, if there was a, an old shirt or an old dress or, you know, all the women wore dresses then. Mm -hmm. uh, so house dresses. Yes. In the, you know, uh, and you'd have your Sunday go to meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best clothes for Sunday. Um, and the rest of the week it was... Her apron. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so she wore house dresses. They were usually a print, yep. pretty prints of mm -hmm. some kind. She made all her own clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, and she had her aprons. And her apron covered her from the top to mm -hmm. bottom. Uh, white aprons. And, well, she had some colored ones too, but she, she usually had a nice white starched apron, mm -hmm. hung, behind the door, um, kitchen door, so that somebody drove into the yard or somebody came to the door, whip off that dirty apron, put, put on, on that one. nice clean starched <laughs> apron and go to the door. That's how they did it. I was wondering, how are they still clean? Yes, that's, that's <laughs> how, how are they still clean? <laughs> <laughs> so you basically so, are like, this is cool. Yeah. I, I love it. I love to hear it because it's homesteading now is such a foreign concept to people. It really is. And I mean, it's getting bigger now. And I think since COVID hit, it's really starting to explode more. People are kind of getting back to it. Right. Uh, but there's still a lot of people that are just, it's completely foreign to them. It is. How on earth could you ever live that way and, and everything else? And I grew up the same way as you, Cal. With all of the amenities, you know, yes. I didn't know that, but I well, we never do. cared about it. I always wanted to get back, yeah, and go to to a time that I didn't exist, yeah, and and get back to living like off the grid. Well, kind that's of thing. why I'm saying that I was so fortunate to have had uh, seven years mm -hmm. of living with my grandparents there mm -hmm. uh, because the neighbors had power. Mm -hmm. They had all the amenities, you know refrigeration, mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but because our road was uh, off the beaten path, we were a mile in on a side road, mm -hmm. um, the power company wouldn't run the poles hmm. in there unless we had four houses in there. Oh. And so there were only two houses when mm -hmm. I was growing up with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Uh, after my dad came home, uh, he had been in the war and he had recuperated uh, from injuries and he had taken a trade um, through the service mm -hmm. uh, as a pipe fitter and welder uh, in St. John. So he was away from home and that was why I was there with my parents and so mm -hmm. on. Um, with my grandparents, rather. And um, so when Dad came home, um, they gave him so many acres on the farm for his, and um, and he built a house. Mm -hmm. And so that made three houses in there. <laughs> Need one more. They still wouldn't. So the power company and the telephone company, no. Mm -hmm wouldn't run poles. Of course, it was expensive to run poles. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted enough profit off it to make it worthwhile. Um, so, finally, the fellow that lived across from my grandparents, his son got married and started having a family. And so they said, okay, you take the big house and we'll build a little bungalow over here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the older folks. So they built the little bungalow and made us four houses mm. on the road. <laughs> um, so they did put the power in. By the time they put the power in, I was in second grade. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 1952. 
we had wow. a power run. Mm -hmm. I started school in 1950, um, walked to school um, a mile and a half. Mm -hmm. See, that is true. Uphill both ways uh, in the snow. <laughs> up, up and down hills. Up and down hills. <laughs> in the snow. It's a thing. It's, a thing. it's, it's real. It's, real. It, it's a real thing. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah. The only time that I took little shortcuts, I'd take a little shortcut uh, through one of the neighbor's fields mm -hmm. and come down into their yard and out onto the road to cut off. Well, I don't know. It wouldn't cut off very much, but mm -hmm. cut off a little bit. The neighbors there were, um, there were two brothers and they had their houses built across the driveway from one another and had their barns and, you know, they were quite a big concern going there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'd come down into their yard when I would cut across the field, come down into their yard and go into... Um, Elsie's house. <laughs> uh, almost every morning, mm -hmm. I'd stop and see Elsie for a few minutes and have a cookie, <laughs> and, <laughs> and maybe you know some milk or warm up. Uh, and warm up. Mm -hmm. And um, on cold, you know, cold, cold in the winter, uh, I'd stop there on my way home. And uh, the only person that had this was after we had the power and the telephone, uh, Elsie would call my grandmother, because we didn't have a phone at our house, um, Elsie would call my grandmother and say, yeah, Barb's been here, she's warmed up, she's on her way home now. Mm -hmm. This would be in the middle of the winter. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all alone. Mm -hmm. I was walking all by myself, because my sisters and brothers were all younger than me. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is that my mother didn't remember that. She didn't remember you walking to school? She didn't remember me walking to school alone. I said, I said to her one day about walking to school alone, and she said, you never walked to school alone. And I said, well, who was walking with me? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it was long. Besides my very <laughs> friends that I imagined. <laughs> And I had all kinds of those. Yeah. <laughs> and I always had a ball. Was there to someone school. there that I don't know about? <laughs> know. Well, she tried to say maybe the neighbor's kids, but the neighbor's kids were even younger than my own brothers and sisters, mm. so no. So no, it was it just you. <laughs> it was just me. In the wintertime, I mean, we would have oodles of snow. I mean, snow. Um, you. Our poles, <laughs> our electric poles, and poles that they put in, mm -hmm. were small. were shorter than the ones that they have today. They've put in higher ones mm -hmm. now, but mm -hmm. uh, so those poles were shorter. But the snow would be piled so high that you could actually we would make a path on top of the snow, mm -hmm. on top of the snowbank, and walk our path on top of the snowbank. Always told never to touch the wires mm -hmm. because they were electrified, so you never touched the wires. Uh, but they would hum with the cold. Mm. You'd hear them humming. If it gets really cold, you'd hear actually hear the electricity going through them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so my grandparents didn't have running water. Mm -hmm. um, so we carry, carried our water. Um, there. When my dad built his house, he put in all the amenities, you know. Mm -hmm. He got uh, the bathroom and the, you know, uh, running water and so on and so forth. My grandparents, they were still living pretty primitively. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were carrying their water from a spring, which was a good distance from the house. So when my grandparents moved in there, they needed a water source. And the people across the road from them had a well with a pump on it. Mm -hmm. And so they used that well with the pump on it because the place was empty. It was abandoned, uh, the same as the farm had been that they bought. Uh, and so they used that. 
Well, when folks moved in there, then they, you know, didn't use that anymore. So my grandfather uh, found a spring um, and cleared it all out and made a beautiful, all oh, the water was excellent from there. Mm. And so the spring was on the other side of the road from the lake, up a little ways. So in order to have that water be fresh and running all the time, uh, my grandfather and the boys put a culvert in uh, under the road. Mm -hmm. So they dug it all. They dug it all out, and they put in what they called a cedar uh, culvert. So they used cedar trees because cedar doesn't rot, mm -hmm. and they cut cedar trees and they lined that culvert with cedar trees and made a culvert through there mm -hmm. so that the water would be continuously running uh, under the road. So they would carry water morning and night. Um, you'd have a pail of water for drinking and a pail of water for uh, drinking, cooking, um, and a pail of water for washing your hands and your face and mm -hmm. so on. Um, to heat water, they had a tank on the end of the wood stove. So the tank on the end of the wood stove would be filled um, so that you'd have warm water for, you know, washing dishes, washing your face and hands, whatever. Mm -hmm. In the summertime, you washed in the shed um, with cold water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming in out of the fields, can you imagine? Yeah, probably felt good. In, <laughs> in the summertime, fields, coming out yes. of the fields, yeah. Coming in out of the fields yeah. and washing in the shed with the water and, you know. And my grandmother had a rain barrel. Mm. Um, so the rain that was coming off the roof would be directed into that rain barrel. It was a big uh, wooden barrel. She called that soft water. Because mm -hmm. the, the water from the spring was full of minerals and mm -hmm. hard water, but that's what we used to drink and so on. Um, so the soft water she would use for washing clothes or uh, if uh, we were doing, well, we didn't never, we never had a bathtub. We had, everything was a sponge bath. Mm -hmm. um, everyone would bathe on Saturday, either Friday night or Saturday, depending on what was going on. If people were going into town on Saturday night, which a lot of people did, uh, they'd come in from the field and they'd bathe and change their clothes and go to town on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, she was always tired by the end of the, mm -hmm. you know, once in a while she'd go to town, but uh, she liked having the house to herself. Mm -hmm. I bet. Um, on, Saturday, <laughs> on Saturday. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so everybody would get ready, you know, all the guys. It was all men in our house mm -hmm. because it was uncles and, you know, uh, my grandfather. And uh, so they'd get ready and they'd go to town. And uh, that was when Grammy would take her sponge bath. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, they'd be gone. She'd take her sponge bath, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'd usually have my bath when she had her bath and so on. Um, I just, I just loved it. I loved every minute of it. Every, every minute of So it. if you had the choice, the way you are now, we, obviously we live more modern life mm -hmm. now with all of these amenities, and that, do you think you could go back to that? Oh, I would. Would you want to go back to that? I would. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Um, we kind of, I mean, we have our power here and, mm -hmm. and everything. But we have our wood stove, um, we have our gas stove, so that, you know, if... Yeah, we have all these amenities here, and of course we're very comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. We miss our power when uh, we don't have it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm, an, I'm an old soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love my wood stove. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, I like to be comfy and warm. And, Mm -hmm. So on. 
But to get back to the farm. Well, I wanted to ask you real quick. Yeah. Did you guys have animals for meat? Yes. You did. What kind of animals did you guys we, have for meat? All kinds. <laughs> <laughs> um, we raised chickens mm -hmm. um, for meat. Um, pig. We usually kept a steer cow mm -hmm. for meat. Yeah. Yeah, so we would have beef, we would have pork, we would have chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, bacon. We never, we never, huh? Bacon. That's yeah, bacon pork, from yeah. our pork. Oh, um, so bacon is the best. they didn't butcher until after the cold weather came in, mm -hmm. because our meat hung in the shed. Oh, okay. Frozen. Mm -hmm. And so my grandfather would go out and cut. <laughs> you want to roast? You okay. Just cut it from the. <laughs> I don't know. Cut it off. With, wow. With the meat saw. Wow. So it just hung there like all winter and hung you just kind of cut winter. what you needed? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hung really? There all wow. Yeah. But the see, the, the weather was different then too. Yeah. than it is now. Um, like, say, the end of October. From the end of October until after Easter would be so cold mm -hmm. that it would keep. And, uh, and any. Thing else like uh, well you've always heard of pickled pig's feet mm -hmm. yeah yep. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff would be pickled or salted mm -hmm. in crocks mm -hmm. you curing it yeah yeah so okay. they would have um, well it was preserving mm -hmm. right uh, in these crocks and what my grandmother would do would be she'd take uh, white cloth and wax it. Mm -hmm. She dip it in wax and put it over the tops of these crocs mm -hmm. with you know twine and yeah, yeah uh, tie that on and those would be in the cellar. All the preserves would be in the cellar mm -hmm. um, on shelves. How much uh, did she put up? Oh my god it would be shelves and shelves lined with mm -hmm. you know uh, jams and jellies and she would buy her things as they would come in, like fruits. Mm -hmm. uh, as they would come in, she'd buy uh, a, like baskets of plums and do them up in jars. Mm -hmm. uh, baskets of peaches. Mm -hmm. um, apples, we always had apples. Um, we had apple trees, um, so we always had apples. We picked raspberries through the whole season of raspberries, um, strawberries, mm -hmm. uh, but our strawberries were wild, so we we knew where they were. <laughs> <laughs> Certain fields, nobody told anybody where their strawberry mm -hmm. patch was. It's a secret. Yeah, we had what they called on the farm new land. My grandfather called it new land. The reason being that when they would cut wood off of it, um, that's how they used to make fields mm -hmm. and things. They would cut the wood off and then they would pull the stumps and mm -hmm. then they would have new land. Yep. Right? So he called it new land. We never did pull the stumps or anything off this particular area, uh, but they had cut the wood off it. And when they cut the wood off it, the raspberry bushes grew mm -hmm. in there. And we had the best raspberry mm -hmm. bushes ever. We had gooseberries. You never see gooseberries anymore. Blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, gooseberries. Um, we never raised turkeys or anything like that, and we never had turkey for Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, we would have chicken. Grammy would usually put two or three chickens in a big roasting pan, mm -hmm. stuffed chickens, <laughs> and. Uh, We'd ha you know, chicken was our thing. One year, I was 10 years old actually, because I know this because my sister was born that year, uh, 1954, um, Jill, and Dad had to go in for an operation to the Veterans Hospital. And we stayed with Grammy, all of us that were in school stayed with Grammy and Grampy. And one of the babies, Jackie, mm -hmm. stayed. And mom and dad took Phyllis Carroll 
and Jill with them and dad went in for the operation and he, they were gone from uh, I'd say the end of October because it was like after harvest is over dad went in so they were gone like November December mm -hmm. and they came home for Christmas and they came home <laughs> about two days before Christmas they roll in and dad comes in and he's got this great big turkey <laughs> Frozen turkey, mm -hmm. not a, uh, you know, not, not fresh a turkey out the farm. with feathers. <laughs> 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 a frozen turkey. We had never seen anything like it. It was like, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> That's the biggest bird we've ever seen. <laughs> and he said, oh, this is our treat. We're going to have turkey for Christmas this year. Mm -hmm. So we had turkey for Christmas that year. Did but you prefer I can, that or the chicken? <laughs> <laughs> did I prefer that or the chicken? I don't know. Uh, I mean, both were really good. Mm -hmm. We always enjoyed our food. Um, I like food. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. So I never had a problem with food. Um, I had about, I could usually count on one hand the things that I didn't like because I like everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I was in school and we had home ec, um, they would have us bake something or cook something, mm -hmm. and half of the people in the class wouldn't want to try it. It was really? like something that was they weren't familiar with, mm -hmm. so it's like, oh, I'm not trying that. And I'd say, I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> I'll try I it. loved home ec. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it, no problem. To go back to the farm, though, are you, that house that you have in Canada, that's the same house, correct? Yes. That you grew up in. Okay, so that's your grandparents' that's farmhouse. That's my grandparents' That you guys house. now have. Yes. And live there when you're in Canada. Yes. See, that's so neat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always wanted to go home. Anyway, that's, that's for another story another time.